This is your host Michael Nguyen from Asian Success Show, where successful entrepreneurs show you how they build a company and achieve success. I'm excited to have uh, Xie Huang today. He is the founder and CEO of Box.com. Uh, this is an online mobile application that help that help consumers to shop warehousing goods from mobile and tablet. And uh, and as a former Zynga New York director and former CEO of Astro App, he's launched the number one game. What's the phrase? And share. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. I'm happy, uh, really happy to be here. Excellent. Okay, share. I've given our listener just an overview about you, and so take a minute and and uh, tell the audience a little bit about yourself, and then share uh, about your business. Sure, sure. So my name is Jay Huang. Uh, I'm I'm an entrepreneur. I'm the founder and CEO, of, co-founder and CEO of uh, Box.com. Um, we're in. We're uh, basically an online uh, wholesale club, and so we bring the warehouse club experience. For example, a warehouse club being a Costco, BJ's, or Sam's Club, we bring that experience uh, straight to your door. And so we're we're the wholesale club for people who don't have the time, uh, the means, or the patience to go to a physical warehouse club. Um, started life uh, or started my early years here in. Uh, in uh, in New Jersey, um, I grew up in Edison, New Jersey, Middlesex County. Went mm. to public schools throughout, so it wasn't a very glamorous uh, childhood, but um, taught me a lot of things. Um, wandered my way through school, then through college. Uh, lived abroad for a few years, came back, and um, pretty much got onto the entrepreneurial track um, after a few years at a at a big company. Excellent. We we'll, we we'll, we will talk more about that later. Okay. On, so. All right. <laughs> so. Um, Share at Agent Success Show. I start a show with the guest's favorite success quote at the way of getting the motivational ball rolling for the audience. So, what is your favorite success quote, and how do you apply it to your business? Sure, I would say I don't know if it's an actual quote, but I would say my favorite idea um, is that. Um, well, I, a lot of people ask me all the time, like, um, you know, what does it take to to build a business, right, um, and to time the business right. So. Really, what I have to say, and, and sometimes it's not said enough, that it's really three things: it's um, luck, timing, and hard work. And so luck. Those people th- luck, timing, and uh, hard work. Hard work. So those three things, right? But most people prioritize it the other way around, and so you get a lot of people, like everyone who starts a business, just about everyone works very hard because it's their dream, uh, it's their passion, and so that's a very kind of basic baseline of. of what you need to to kind of build a business. Um, timing is also very important. Um, just for example, like if you were making uh, black and white TVs, you know, probably not the best timing to do so. So timing, you know, it's a very extreme example, but timing uh, is is very important. Um, and kind of like when you when I I read the books about like really successful entrepreneurs and a lot of kind of people doing crazy big things out there. I think um, it's underreported or understated that. Um, that luck has has a lot to do with it, right? Like a lot of people work hard, a lot of people get the timing right, and just for some reason or another, the luck doesn't strike. I, I firmly believe that every kind of everyone gets a chance, and um, it's it's like a lightning strike of chance of, of luck, and it's up to you to kind of you know uh, really kindle that fire or or not. So for this business, do you believe that that luck's involved in this business as well? Oh, absolutely. I, I feel like luck is a, a Big portion of, of uh, my entire life, you know. Um, I'm not one of those people that think that like I made a lot of right decisions. That's why I'm in the position I I am today. I think someone has obviously blessed me from above. Uh, I, I work hard. I think timing's okay, um, and uh, I'm 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 pretty lucky. So you know, I, I would say uh, it's a confluence of all three factors for me. Excellent. So your success quote is uh, luck, timing, and hard work. That's right. That's right. That's the formula. So. Uh, Hopefully you guys don't share too much of it, but. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, your background, you were an attorney, right? Uh, sorry? Your background, you used to be an attorney. Uh, I was, yeah, that's right, in another life. Um, on the, I guess that's for the show, the Asian Attorney Success uh, Magazine. So, um, but yeah, I, I, was, uh, I was an attorney in another life. So after okay. living abroad, I, I, I came back to law school, um, started my career on September 15th, 2008. Um, mm-hmm. And so to a lot of people, that doesn't mean a, lo- a lot. But um, if you rewind the history books, uh, s- the evening of September 14th, 2008 is the evening uh, 
uh, Lehman Brothers uh, filed for bankruptcy. Right. So I started my career the day when the world started falling apart. And so it was, uh, it was quite a wake-up call, quite a wake-up call. My office was uh, basically one block over from the Lehman Brothers building. And so I literally, as I was kind of walking to work in my new clothes and my new shoes, my new briefcase, um, you just saw a stream of people uh, bringing their boxes out of the, the Lehman Brothers building. Wow. So very sobering. Um, but I think it was a difficult time to be in any business, uh, let alone law, you know. Um, but I think it taught me a lot. It taught me a lot of uh, that first or the last factor that I mentioned, um, hard work. Taught, taught me a lot about that. But how does this path uh, lead you to the entrepreneurial path? Yeah, well, if... Um, Uh, Michael, if you have friends in a law firm or in a big in a big law firm, I'm pretty sure like uh, 12 out of 10 of them hate being there. And so, believe me, like after you spend time at a big law firm, it'll squeeze a lot of creativity out of you. You know, anything except this. And so, um, lucky enough, um, I've always been interested in entrepreneurship. And so, you know, um, decided to go off and and kind of do something big with with some some of fr- some I guess high school and middle school friends of mine. Um, I just thought it was the right time to, to leave. I was, you know, I guess I was a little bit kind of overworked, uh, crazy, and um, kind of, you know, just overworked and, and crazy and maybe a little stupid at the time. But I'm glad, I'm glad it worked out. Excellent. Okay, so now let's talk about Box a little bit then. And, um, yeah, and uh, your, your little baby uh, <laughs> generated lots of buzz, lots of homicide buzz, like, you know, like... Uh, Costco killers and Costco, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, okay, let's share with the audience the um, uh, the aha moment. I know that you've been sharing this with lots of uh, media, but for uh, for my audience, let's share with them the aha moment that led you to the birth of Boxed. Okay, so not the birth of my newborn, but birth of Boxed. So uh, birth of Box really was just um, I would say it's it goes back to kind of growing up in 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 central New Jersey, you know. Um, I grew up every single weekend, uh, I would mow the lawn, uh, <laughs> and I would uh, go to Costco, or at the time it was called Price Club, uh, with my parents. And so you realize that there's, there's awfully great deals for stuff that you need every day, and so you know, it became a ritual almost, you know. And so um, we were lucky that we lived very close to one, and so you know, it became part of my childhood. Um, growing older though, as soon as I kind of you know, moved into Manhattan, um, You realize that wow, like suddenly you, I didn't have the means to get to a Costco. You know, the nearest one was about literally 110 blocks away from me, um, and I didn't have the car to get there, and I wasn't going to lug all that stuff home on the subway. So suddenly, I was without my weekly ritual, and so um, I often thought, like, you know, how could how could this be the case, right? Like, am I the only person that that know, that knows that we're getting ripped off by going to the local kind of <laughs> drugstore to buy a toilet paper or you know the online options aren't that aren't that great and on, aren't that well priced um, and so I don't know I always thought that like it's a problem that needed to be solved um, and so after leaving Zynga um, we you know I, I took a look and I just knew mobile commerce was was the future and no one everyone talks about it everyone knows it's going to be big but no one's really doing it right and so Um, a new mobile commerce was what we needed to do, and I just knew that, like, you know, I had this. I was onto this big problem that no one had solved. That, like, literally, I could not believe it's 2014, and you have to like wait online for for hours at a time, or like take these, this this three-hour trip to go to your warehouse club, to your local warehouse club, to um to buy your everyday necessities. And so, I thought there has I can't be the only person in the world, right? And so, um, we decided to to go for it. Um, A little bit crazy, a little bit of a kind of bigger idea than most people would want to go to go for on their first startup. Uh, it wasn't our first startup, or wasn't our first company. So I thought it was kind of like we graduated into like a much higher <laughs> difficulty uh, company to do. That's amazing. I, I shop Costco too, and then long lines, but nobody thought about it until I read your article. I'm like, dang, this guy's yeah. smart. <laughs> no, no, but well, Michael. So this is what I was saying, right? Like I think. So, like, Costco is a great company. They treat their people very well. Their customers are very happy. Uh, most of the customers are very happy. And so, if you have the time, uh, the means, uh, or the patience to go to Costco, then you absolutely should. You know, they're a great company, great service. But I think we're designed for the people, like I said, that, that don't have the time, the means, and the patience to get to one. 
um, and that's uh, that's why we built uh, that's why we built Box. Excellent. And okay, so before we we dig a, a little deeper, so Shay, can yeah. you share with the audience um, the growth of Box for the past years? I know that how many days that you've been serving sure, and sure. as far as the uh, so, the, um, the size. So it's been a pretty crazy ride. So we launched. Um, a small test, I think around August or September of last year, um, and then within like 30 days of that test, we knew we were onto something. Um, we knew, like, even though we were only available in two or three states at the time, uh, we had just tons of emails coming in, like, "When are you coming to my state? Are you shipping here? Why aren't you shipping here? Add more stuff." And we just knew we had to do it. So basically, in 90 days, we built uh, a, uh, like a national infrastructure where we ended up being able to fulfill across 48 states um, in about 90 days. And so we launched nationwide in November. Um, and when I say national infrastructure, I, I really mean like a national one that like m almost 90% of our packages arrive at the customer's door in two business days. Wow. Um, and so the maximum is three business days in anywhere in the contiguous 48 states. Um, and so we really built that out. And so it was, it was a hard education, but uh, you know, we did a fast, uh, solved a lot of problems on the fly, um, and really built that out. So in November, we launched nationwide, um, started growing uh, very quickly, like 100% uh, month over month for a few months there. Um, and then just recently, we raised uh, another round of, of financing from another round of funding from, uh, from venture capitalists. Congratulations, that's very aggressive. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you. it's very aggressive. Um, but like I said, we were, we were talking a little bit about uh, before before the show and that um, basically you know I, I I think of it I'm very humbled that I'm on the show for, for one I don't see myself oh, as, exactly. you know no Thank but you. I don't see myself as very successful just yet I see myself on a highway and like kind of fighting every day to be successful um, because funding is not the the goal right the end goal is to build a great company that's loved by everyone in the country right um, and maybe even worldwide one day um, funding is just one step along that goal and now the real work starts and now the real kind of problems and the real pain of scaling a big business now now they start but I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it excellent with the goal of, of solving just for the, for the New York market how did it grow so fast so if you think about it um, like what I what I kind of said before is that we built it to solve a problem that we ourselves had right, right. like I built it because I no longer had the means to go to Costco but after we launched the product we realized that you know, we really, um, uh, we underestimated the amount of people that don't have the time or the patience to go to a Costco. Um, and so that's really um, kind of where we got all the traction from. So, of course, it was a no-brainer for people living in Manhattan. Not everybody needs Costco stuff, but the people that did need the kind of big uh, club packs, as we call them, like the warehouse club uh, items, um, you know, it was a no-brainer, right? They didn't have the means to get there. But then, we, but then people around the country, uh, a lot of moms, uh, fathers, you know, that just don't want to load the kids in the car for an all-day trip. Um, it started really kind of spreading in those circles. So people would email or forward emails to me where kind of there was all these email chains of like this mommy group or this mommy blog that was like, hey, have you heard about this service <laughs> called Box? You know, like, wow, I didn't know something like this existed. And so um, we really spread word of mouth. So when we were growing uh, up until our, our, our funding just now, like we spent – basically almost no money on, on, on marketing. Wow. Um, it was very tiny, our, our marketing budget, and it was mostly um, word of mouth, organic growth um, across the country. And so by doing so, um, we were forced, by not having a marketing budget, we were forced to grow or to, to build a very good kind of experience uh, as a baseline. That we knew we didn't have the money to go and pay you to, to kind of use that, the service. Um, so we had to build a great experience that you would share and be our advertising uh, for us. And now it's, uh, it's good because we, sh we see a lot of kind of virality in, in the app. Excellent. Okay, let's, let's just zoom a little bit. So how did okay. you plan the seed then? So you guys, you and your uh, co-founders wrote mm -hmm. the app and, th and things like that, then plan yep. the seed to App Store and, or, and Google Play. And how does yep. that grow into at the point where, hey, your people talk about it so much, we need to do something? Um, so I think it, it definitely starts with your friends and family, right? It starts with also getting the word out. Um, and it starts with solving a problem that a lot of people truly have. Um, you know, I, if we didn't 
if we were sold, I, I, and I'm looking around my house, like, I don't know, if we sold lamps, for example, like, I think it would, would, wouldn't be nearly as kind of um, uh, word of mouth uh, or easily spread via word of mouth as we would if we sold um, kind of stuff that, or, or if we were in a business that a lot of people um, had a problem with, you know. And so uh, we solved the problem like you, like you said, you know, it resonated with you. Um, it ended up resonating with a lot of people and that so once people started talking about it, um, like local news, for example, local uh, Fox News, like Fox 5 News, um, found out about the, about the app and they loved it and then they came and covered it. And so that was a great spark for us. And then starting from there, people just not only downloaded it, but then started kind of, it just started snowballing, I guess. Excellent. Um, yeah, it's, um, you know, when most people, like, I guess my advice is that um, when you're, you know, everyone has an app idea these days and hopefully like it's one that not only solves a problem uh, for people, but also uh, solves a problem to a degree that they would actually want to tell their friends and family about it. Um, and I think that's a, that's a very important thing that's often not, not, not kind of, that's often kind of glazed over, I guess, when people think about like an app idea. Excellent. So you got the very strong start with, you know, the app is growing with zero marketing budget on that. Yep. And a then, little bit, yeah, and a little bit different now. Now that we have funding, uh, a good good round of funding, now we actually have a marketing budget. But um, now is when uh, things get fun, right? Like we can start scaling the business and really making a household name. That like we hope that you know when people think about needing this stuff, and you know if they don't have the time, the means, or the patience to get to a warehouse club, that we're we're a very kind of legitimate uh, um, and good alternative to that. So you said back in October of last year when you yep. guys went national, how well, did you... November, actually November. I'm oh, sorry, okay, so November of last year yep. when you guys went national, how did you guys deal with the certain uh, uh, avalanche of, of uh, orders and, and do the fulfillment? <laughs> it, was, uh, it was quite, quite um, an interesting time. So I must say that I've packed my, share, my fair share of boxes along with our, our, our very capable people in, in the warehouse. Um, it's basically anything and everything, you know, even my, my wife packed a few boxes or <laughs> packed a lot of boxes, you know, um, and really I just need all, a lot of friends, a lot of family helped out. Um, and really, you know, we, we had to like all come together and really kind of, um, get it done, you know, um, because, you know, at the end of the day, you realize that each one of it, what's great, what's bad about have being in physical commerce is that it's physical, right? You, you have inventory, you have this, but I think what's great is that each time you see a box go out the door, that's like hopefully that can make someone's day. Hopefully, Absolutely. like we save someone two or three hours of their day, and that you know, like by being by seeing each one of those boxes, it, it still is very special to me. Uh, when it goes onto the trucks, I feel like wow, you know, how many how much time do we just save by filling this truck, you know? And so, um, yeah, that's that's what I would say. It, it, so basically, a lot of hard work. I I, I um I so. You know, I flew out to the warehouse and like I, I was there for almost an entire month. I, I lived right next to our West Coast warehouse facility. And so um, it wasn't an easy time. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to be away. My wife was pregnant at the time. And so it's hard to wait to be away from her. But, you know, it's uh, you make do. Right. It's like pursuing pursuing your dreams. Sometimes you got to got to pursue sacrifice. your dreams. It's not. And then, yeah, make sacrifices. And it's not what the easiest. Was, of so what was the lesson that you learned from that being from, you, you know, um, very uh, high skill in gaming and stuff. Now you come at the warehouse and packing stuff. I I think you have to. Sorry, so that's a great question. I think if, if I feel very strongly about this, so I, I think two things, right? Like one, you have to, you have to. Uh, a lot of people say believe in yourself. You have to trust yourself. Is is how I feel. It was very important. Not that I believed in myself. That I trusted myself that when we started the business, I thought it was a great idea. And that like, I think a lot of people have the same problem as me. But when you first start a business, it's not, you know, of course, you know, you, there are ups and downs, right? And when you have the downs, you kind of lose focus. You know, you, you kind of think, you know, what was it? Why did I start this? You know, it's a hard business. Like why, you know, aren't there easier things to do, you know, in this world? And, and really there are like, but then you kind of have to, what I did was I rewound, like I rewound a few months and I'm like, well, I, I kind of thought like, is that what, what do, do I trust that guy? Like, do I trust that Che to make that decision? I, I really thought, wow, you know, I wasn't, hopefully I, I didn't think I was that dumb, you know, at that time. And <laughs> really, 
Um, if I could just tell, if that Che could talk to the current Che, it would, he would basically say, like, shut up, put your head down, and, and do pursue it. this dream, right? The easy way out is to quit and just do it and trust me that it'll work out okay. And so that's one, trust yourself. Um, and to believe in yourself, I think what's more important is to surround yourself by people who believe in you, right? I think there will be many times that, like, if you didn't believe in yourself, you wouldn't start a business, right? You wouldn't right. have the self-confidence to start a business. But there will be times when it's, when it's tough. And you need to surround yourself by people who believe in you, even though uh, there are times where you don't believe in yourself, right? I, I think, you know, recently, I think everyone's watched the Kevin Durant speech, like the right. MVP speech. And that resonated with me so much, and it's so true that like certain, you know, he's MVP at, at, in the, of the NBA this year. You know, he's like one of the best basketball players on the face of the earth. Um, and sometimes he admitted that he doesn't believe in himself, right? And so it made me feel like, wow, you know, like yeah, like if he has those moments, then like I guess it's kind of okay for for me to to have my moments. Like who the hell am I, you know? And like if he's having those problems, then then yeah, I, I had similar problems, but. It was great because I surrounded myself by friends, family, and coworkers that believed in me. And so, really, that's once you're in growing the business, you know, the day to day, that's what keeps you going, right? Like, you wake up, you got to get into work, you got to do this. Why? Of course, you're pursuing your dream, but also because there's 10 other people waiting for you at the warehouse, like waiting for you to show up and waiting for you to, to, to kind of lead, right? And so, that's what, you know, that's what got me up every morning. So, those two things. Trust yeah. yourself and surround yourself by people who believe in you. Excellent. So you set up yourself in a way that you cannot quit. You, there's only one way to go. Because yep, so, many, so many people depend on you. That's right. That's right. And it, it definitely <clears throat> it definitely helps, you know, um, that uh, people depend on you. You can see it as a, as a problem, um, as something that people shy away from, or you can see it as an opportunity to really kind of drive yourself to Excellent. not disappoint these people that are believing in you and trusting you. You mentioned earlier that some areas in... in um, the country they may get two days of shippings and yep. so let's say the moment i'm ordering right now how does yeah. the, the package come on time for you to ship for them so that they can get two days sure so right now if you order actually so uh two days or less actually so about 90 percent of our packages show up either overnight or mm -hmm. in two days um so the order comes through our we own uh we operate the fulfillment center ourselves so we own the experience and so um we're we're in the middle of some changes on the West Coast where we, we're bringing an even better experience. We're, we're, moving, we're probably moving into a bigger warehouse, uh, even better experience for the West Coast. So the West Coast viewers, please uh, bear with us. You know, you have a very good experience and probably in as little as maybe 14 days or so, you know. Um, but yeah, so the orders come through. Uh, we built the software end to end. So meaning that um, we, own, we built and own the software, not only the, the app that you download, like the consumer facing side but also the back-end warehouse management software so it pipes through our own servers and our own systems um, and it powers the warehouse and it powers our inventory management and so um, your box is carefully packaged uh, um, on the West Coast not yet but pretty soon just like the East Coast people you get a nice little handwritten note uh, we call it a love letter uh, you know that says a handwritten note to make you feel like you're a real person not just some random person clicking buttons and ordering something um, and then it basically goes out, uh, goes out of our warehouse via one of our one of our kind of uh, logistics partners. Um, what's interesting though is that I think we're going to add a lot. So pretty soon you'll probably see um, um, a picture of your box being packed. You know, we're just thinking about different ways. How can we be different than every, everyone out there? Well, I think one, most big companies will never hand write a note to you that says, even if it says "Thanks for your order, Michael," you know, makes you feel like, wow, is someone a human packed my box? And so, um, you know, stuff like that, maybe, like I said, maybe even like a picture of your box being packed, um, just little stuff to, to differentiate ourselves. Out of many different models, you chose this model to add experience instead of doing like a third party drop shipping. Yep, that's right, that's right. That's why wise um, move. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, um, it it's makes the business harder. It costs uh, more, yeah, it costs more. It costs though. more, absolutely. Um, but without owning the whole kind of end-to-end -end infrastructure, right? Um, or the end-to-end -end kind of a flow of the package and the inventory and, and out of our own facilities, you can't really do much to give the customer a good experience. It's more like we can take care of you if you drop ship, we can take care of you up to a certain point, 
and then it's almost like we're transmitting the order to someone else and then like cross our fingers like hopefully they treat you well right right you know? and so at the end of the day you know e even as the company behind it you can say you better treat our customers well or else blah 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 but at the same time like you know you can't really enforce it so but for us it's our warehouse it's our people you know and so um, we can enforce that every every customer needs to be loved got to be heads up to you because as a background as a technology you know you <laughs> high skill in, in gaming and in you know in technology but now you come back to become you got to uh, become masterful at, at uh, warehouse management and shipping and things like that how did you get around those stuff at, well uh, you know it, it's um a lot of trial and error, a lot of mistakes and learning from those mistakes and really I feel like I love it. I love I love renewing myself, reinventing myself. I mm -hmm. love I love being the low man again on a totem pole. Like I went into this business and I freely admitted I know nothing. Like right. I need to learn everything. But in in that therein lies the the kind of opportunity and the, the problem and the opportunity, right? The problem is that you, you, you really know nothing about this industry, but the opportunity is that once you do learn a good deal, then um, you're not influenced by the kind of the the old way of thinking, right? Like, like we just thought of it. Like, why most people go out and they license a warehouse manager software, but for us, we thought like most of this stuff is not good. Like, why not write our own? You know, why not kind of um, do this or do that? Why not pack the box this way? Why not you know do the flow of the warehouse this way? I think. We were able to go in like a, with a clean slate, um, and some people, some kind of professionals, come to our warehouse and they think, "Wow, sometimes like you do things in a weird way, but it works for us." You know, we we were we we kind of solved our own problems in in a way that maybe other solutions, more accepted solutions, might have might not have been able to solve as as effectively. So the key is come with uh, with a clean mind and and willing to learn anything. Exactly, and a lot of coffee and Red Bull, and so that uh, that definitely helps. That definitely helps a lot. And so, excellent. <laughs> you know, a lot of late nights. Let's talk about mobile commerce, and you. Uh, I think you're very, you're very exciting about that when you work at. Yeah. You, you mentioned earlier when you work at Zingers, and uh, for this business, you, uh, you guys intentionally only uh, put put this baby on on mobile and tablet. Why is that? That's right. Um, well, here, here's here's. Like our last company called Astro Ape, right, was acquired by Zynga about three, four years ago now. Um, we were one of the first uh, social game developers on mobile. Everyone was going to Facebook. Zynga was fighting Playdom on on Facebook. Uh, no one was making social games on 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 Apple or iTunes at the time. And so we thought, well, that doesn't make sense, right? More and more people are switching over to smartphones, um, and these things are going to become more and more powerful. So. Um, we, we got into it early. Um, and basically, the, the joke in the industry was that, oh, every year is a year of mobile gaming. And then every year, every year, every year. And that was a joke, right? And so until it was, the, it was the year of mobile gaming, then it suddenly wasn't a joke anymore. And in fact, all the, most of the big gaming companies were not prepared for it. Um, and you know, basically, it took over. That tide turned so fast and so hard that no one uh, was prepared for it. And so once we left Zynga, I thought, what else is out there? You know, like we're not going to do games uh, again, you know, um, but uh, what else is there? Like what are the big problems are there to solve? And it's mobile commerce. I think it's the same pattern, right? Like people talk about it. All the analysts, all the charts say, yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And people are like, oh, yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And then uh, we have, you know, I have a theory. We have a theory that um, that um, it's going to happen pretty soon. That like, really, there will be a breakout mobile retailer, whether it's boxed or not. I don't know. I hope it's boxed. I think we're well positioned to be it. But even if it's not boxed, I think there will be a very, very big, successful mobile retailer that most people do not know of today, who's they're going to break when they're going to break out in the next 12 to 48 months. Wow. Um, that a very big company will break out, and so. For us, it's a huge opportunity, right? Like the people who, the people who solved desktop web commerce, um, all those companies, you know, whether it be Amazon, whether it be Overstock, whether it be, you know, all the individual kind of people that do very well in in, in desktop commerce these days, uh, primarily desktop commerce. 
um, they became kind of some of the biggest uh, technology companies in, in America or some of them even in the world, right? And so um, my theory is that uh, that will happen in mobile. There will be a, a massive shift to mobile that we're seeing today. Um, and that will be kind of the, one of the biggest markets to be, uh, to be solved or to be had. Um, and so from a business perspective, that's how we think. From a consumer perspective, it's just easy. You look right. at all the mobile commerce apps out there, like probably nine out of ten, you would just would never want to use again. It's just like a painful experience. Well, if you download the box app and you go through it, like most people say, wow, it's like simple to use, beautiful, just very clean, very kind of easy to get in, easy to find stuff that I never knew existed, you know, or stuff that I know I needed, and then easy to check out. And so that was what we focused on, and I think. Um, from a consumer perspective, I think that's what that's that's the message and that's the experience we want to give them. We want to give them the best experience they've ever had uh, buying something from their mobile device um, because the bar is pretty low right now in terms of that. Man, you reminded me about your quote earlier: "Luck, uh -oh. timing, and hard work." You see, yeah. you, you got used to have you used to develop the games on on mobile, and now he all the experience now comes comes in handy. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, if you think about the, the, you know, people ask all the time, like, what, what do you know from a game? You're a gaming guy. Like, how, what do you know about, about commerce, you know? Well, if you think about it, um, if you look at the top charts and the top grossing charts on, on uh, iTunes um, or the App Store, uh, most of the top apps and most of the top grossing apps are, are all games, right. right? It's the most mature vertical in mobile. Right, like we've studied how people interact with uh, their mobile devices for years now, you know, and so since the advent of the smartphone, basically, and so um, gaming people, I feel like know the most about about mobile these days, um, and so we're so we just kind of took that knowledge. Not all of it is transferable, but we took kind of some basic knowledge, some of the the, the stuff that we knew from gaming, and then transplanted that into commerce. Again, some of it totally didn't work. Uh, but a lot of it did, and I think you know that's why we were able to build a pretty good experience. And hats off to your team, then great job. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, my hat off to their team, for, for to our team too, because you know I have the easy job. I just get here to hang out with you and, uh, uh. and tell you about all these all these things that we're doing. Except they're at home doing it right now, so you know, um, yeah, hats off to them. Uh, quick question about this. Uh, so you know for sure that that there's a, there's a giant market of desktop commerce, but That's you right. decided to go with mobile commerce. Would you think that you leave a lot of money on the table? Absolutely. I think I think so. I think we can probably. I don't know. We can probably maybe do I dare say double our business overnight if we have if we launch our website, you know? And so um, yeah, but I think. Here's what happens, right? Like, we're our vision is to transform mobile commerce. That when you think about buying something on your mobile device, that the experience is so good on box that like that we'll have other apps that you just feel like something in the box app world or in the in the kind of our our little ecosystem of apps, um, we'll have something for you. And that like you'll think of us every time you think of mobile commerce. Um, but I think you know, obviously, like you said. Um, some people want to shop on the desktop. A lot of people want to shop on their desktop. I might even say the majority of, of consumers these days want to shop on their desktop. But, but I think the trend is definitely that uh, people are going towards, towards mobile. Um, the adoption rate is, is way faster than the internet even. You know, if you think about why would you only make an internet only site, website, right? Like, like most people, if you rewind to 1997 or 1998, right. most people have physical stores. And yeah, are you, Amazon probably could have doubled their sales immediately if they launched stores all around the, all around the country. Um, but the way that I think about it is that they focused on what their vision is and what they're good at. And so I think it's the same way for us. It's funny though, because if you look at, if you look at um, Omnichannel, um, and now I'm getting a little very kind of technical, but no, problem, problem, problem. Like, I love it. I love it. it Omni channel just means like, you know, like you're in brick and mortar retail, uh, web and also mobile. Right. And so if you think about Omni channel companies, people who have that whole stack of technology and, and kind of outlets uh, or channels, they tend to prioritize brick and mortar, then desktop, 
then mobile is the third thing they think about. And they, so that's why the experiences are not very good. We feel like we're building a company from the other way around, where we are mobile first, right now mobile only. And so once we solve that, once we feel like we have to give you a very good experience there, then maybe we think about desktop, you know? And then who knows, maybe 20, 30 years down the line, if a lot of people are still shopping in store, maybe we think about in store as well. Um, I don't know, but I know that we want to solve and we're out to solve mobile commerce first. Now, very interesting. I love it. Uh, so you, you flip the, the, you flip the, the situation backward and let's say as a startup when, you know, at, the, at, at the beginning, the, the cash is very important to you. Yeah. Would you, yeah. I mean, it's a very hard choice for me because I know that, you know, you, you know that, yeah, you focus on mobile as experience, but then yeah. at the same time, you know that you leave a lot of money on the table. But yep. now your, situ your situation has been improved because you got more fundings. Yep. So Would you use that funding to, you know, develop like a, like a mirror on desktop or you just totally focus, you, you bet everything on mobile? So we're not sure yet, you know, like um, we're listening to our customers. Um, see, the hard thing is that like, all right, so even in the last six months, right, like the acceleration of people kind of adopting mobile commerce and willing to shop on their phones and their tablets it just continues to go up, you know? Wow. And so in some ways, yes, we're leaving money, I guess, revenue on the table, but at the same time, like, I feel like it's, it might be kind of a step backwards for us that like people, there's other companies out there that do desktop very well. Um, for us, we don't know if we could do it that well. I'm, I'm sure we can kind of figure it out and, and make a pretty good experience. But for now, I think we want to go where, the momentum is going, you know, where, where kind of, I know it's very cliche, but where the puck is going, right? You don't right. want to kind of, if you go where the puck is now, then by the time you show up, it's going to be too late. And that's kind of how we think about it. Really love your, 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 your consistency, your, your grand vision. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a vision. But like I said, take it with a grain of salt because like it w might work, it might not work, you know? And so, um, I guess, you know, I like to think of myself as humble enough to, to kind of know that. And so, it's you know might be crazy might be dumb but um it's, it's definitely our vision excellent thanks um what are some of the um, um the verticals that you may be expanding in the future with the new fundings and stuff exactly so you know we're thinking about it like um we do very well in certain demographics and so like what else is out there what could we what could we sell in a compelling manner um actually kind of goes back to your original question not we can't sell anything and we can't sell everything right because what we do well on mobile and what mobile lends itself to to allow us to do well is that we're a discovery uh shopping experience right like it's incredible but like the vast 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 majority very few people in our app actually use the search bar it's just the way you know if you think about any other way of shopping like it's the first thing you do is go to the search bar, right? So for us, people come in and they discover things. They kind of know what they want. After they find that, then they continue to discover. And so for that kind of retail, not everything will work, right? Like pure, I don't know, pure, pure, pure groceries, for example, like fresh groceries. It's not like, like if you buy an apple, like you know you want an apple right it's not like oh wow suddenly look at those apples let me go buy that i was here for a banana but let me go buy an apple you know it doesn't really work like that you know and so there's some kind of markets that that might work well in other that that might not you know um apparel works decently well you know people like to go and kind of discover things um um you know a, a bunch of different things you know but for us we're focused on wholesale right now and then we can kind of think about the stuff later. So we haven't made a decision yet, but now that the whole infrastructure is built, um, we can we can definitely think about other other verticals. You brought up a very interesting point. Just so you're saying that people they go to mobile, they don't use a shirt buy at all. They just discover, feel yeah. they discover everything. So um, I wouldn't say that's for all mobile apps, right. but for our mobile apps, that for our mobile app, that's definitely definitely the case. Um, so it's such a high number of people discovering versus searching that it actually even surprises uh, me. So like even when I see the data, I like, it's, it's shocking to me that, um, you know, that people discover things more than they search. Um, because, you know, even for me, I'm sure for you and probably 
most of the viewers out there, it's just a different way of shopping. Like when you go on your desktop website, when you go to a website, what's the first thing you do? Shark. You don't scroll to, yeah, exactly. You don't scroll through the damn website. You actually search. And so um, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, we're, we're trying to pioneer a different, different way, you know, to, to shop. Before I talk to you, uh -huh. I used to think that, man, what happened if Costco jumped into the scenes <laughs> and how can, you know, shake and come up with that. But now after talking to you, I can feel that, I mean, I'm just an outsider. I can feel that there are so many possibilities that you guys can go after. Yeah, well, hopefully, you know, I, I appreciate that. Um, you know, I, I think it's uh, the way that I think about kind of big companies um, in potentially in this space is that we sell stuff that most companies sell stuff that a, a percentage of the people on the street use, right? Like if any strangers on the street, maybe 20% will use it. We sell stuff that basically 10 out of 10 people on the street use. The brands and the products that we sell, they're consumer packaged goods that everyone in this country uses. You know, doesn't matter what age you are, doesn't matter where you're from, you use it. Um, so when it comes to that, right, it's no secret it's a big market. And so why hasn't there been a dominating, uh, like a dominant uh, kind of company that has owned online CPG? There isn't, right? Most people still buy these goods like cleaning products, crackers, cookies, chips. Most people don't buy that online right now. You know, why is that the case? Um, who knows? It just hasn't been solved yet. Um, and it's, but then what I do know is that it's not a secret. It's a big industry, right? It's not like no one's going after it, but no one's solved it yet. And so that's, that's kind of how I feel about big competitors kind of uh, coming into our space. So, uh, Shay, what is your proudest? entrepreneurial moment I think the proudest thing that I can say probably even today right like we had a crazy day uh, in the fulfillment center and just to go and visit um, in that just seeing everybody on the same mission from the person packing the box to uh, the person kind of clicking on the computer to print the labels uh, I came from the office in the morning, so um, to the engineers, to the product managers, to the merchandisers, uh, and even down to, to me, like to see the entire stack of the company focus on the mission of, of, of being a dominant player in, in mobile commerce um, and doing what they, whatever they can do, whether, like I said, it's packing boxes, whether it's choosing what to sell, whether it's writing the actual app, um, whether it's kind of just clicking uh, a, a button on, on a console so you can print the labels. Everybody is focused, right? I didn't see anyone there bored or anyone wanting, not wanting to be there. Like everyone knows we're on, to, we're on a big mission. And I think that, that I'm humbled and that like for, for me as the leader, that's like, that was the most, the most incredible experience, I, I think, to see everyone like that. Um, the company, I think it's almost an afterthought in like what we're building, but to see a bunch of individuals come together like that and, and to all be focused like that I think it's a it's a very very special thing that I hope everyone gets to experience at, at some point in their lives it's definitely a uh, a great moment to be a tribe that that really belonging in <laughs> and thank you, man. Thank you. Um, wow very well um, Shay if, if you could recommend one book to Asian success audience what would it be huh I would say I would say two things. Uh, I would say two books. Sorry, I know you said one book. No problem. The I reason why I say, one, I say two, because one is very cliche. I'm sure I'm not the first person to tell you this, but um, the book, the biography, not the biography, yeah, the biography about Steve Jobs, that was, uh, that was awesome for me to read about his story because like, you learn that like, hey, it's, you know, like Steve Jobs and Apple, talk about most people just know Apple as this massive company <clears throat> a lot, most people don't know about the like the the kind of the ups and downs the company experience and also that he experienced he got kicked out of his own company you know he started in his own garage and he got kicked out and so you know to think about that you know that's just amazing um Shay, I really appreciate your times and your expertise and you know that I'll I'll win over minutes <laughs> no 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 not at all so I really enjoyed it um uh I Luckily enough, like I said, I don't hear I don't hear my daughter crying just yet. But it's almost time. She's only a month old, so like 
Um, it's about time for me to go change some diapers. Oh, and so, my gosh. <laughs> sorry, everybody at home, got to leave you here. Um, but, Michael, um, it was incredible to, to talk to you. I think you asked a lot of questions that got me thinking, too, um, that I guess I wasn't very prepared to answer, but it got me thinking about stuff. So I, I appreciate your time. Excellent. And thank you so much for being so generous with your time, your expertise, and uh, success nation. Salute you. Uh, thank Good you up, very great much. work. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye now. Bye-bye.